Hey guys, D Amazing here to school you guys on what is what is it that we're doing here? Oh yeah, that's right. We're gonna talk about Bandar products, the differences between Tomashi Web Exclusive and normal releases, and the little bit of confusion that goes in the licensing stuff. Sorry if I seem all over the place. It is strictly because it is a lot to cover, and I'm gonna do my best to try to explain this in uh, in layman's terms, so that way everybody understands. So bear with me as we go along. So I'm going to start off with why and what and who and all these things. Straight up, Tamashi Web Shop stuff is stuff that's exclusively for Japan, but sometimes it gets released in North America, Europe, Brazil, all because it is distributed through Bluefin. Bluefin will get the rights and acquire it, and instead of it still being exclusive, the price is lowered, it stays cheap, and it's available to North American residents. That way we can straight up order it without having to go through middleman prices. Pretty cool, right? Indeed, pretty cool. So sometimes you will deal with middlemen and websites that carry it. And the reason why they charge so much is because you have to respect the fact that these guys have to order from Japan. They have to pay up front. They have to buy these things. And then they have to have it shipped to their Japanese guys. Their Japanese guys pack it all up and ship it to them. And then after that, it's, it's cost so much more that they have to cover all their bases. And they still have to pay for their store's rent. So you guys need to learn how to respect stuff like that and not always ask why prices are so high. Because plain and simple, this stuff isn't cheap to begin with. Especially to acquire full cases of it. So you gotta bear with these guys and give them a little bit more respect. That's the least you guys can do. I know I do. So prime example being, uh, I'll just head into the best example I can quite possibly give you of what's going on right now. And that is the Super Sentai slash Power Ranger stuff. Now the Power Ranger stuff, it's all pretty cool and it's great, but what a lot of you guys don't know is in Japan, a lot of this stuff ends up being Tamashi Web Shop stuff, which means it ends up becoming exclusive and makes it difficult to get. But we are we are very fortunate over here in the U.S. to have Power Rangers and have it become so popular for the what it is now, and their Japanese counterparts get made. We get American versions of them. Prime example being the Red Wind Ranger. And the reason why I won't use Mighty Morphin, and I'll get into that in a little bit, because it's a completely different story. This guy came out in Japan, he is a normal release. He was 40 bucks, he's still 40 bucks. Um, and sometimes you can get it cheaper from other places because they'll be having a sale. But in Japan, he comes with more parts and he has different box art. And the reason why is because he comes with different stuff. But when you come over here, it's different box art and they take out certain things. Specifically made version for the US. Now, most of the time with Tamashi Web stuff, it comes in cool brown boxes like this. Brown box, brown box, brown box. This is the Gold Ranger set. Uh, over here, the Crimson and Navy uh, Thunder Rangers from the same series as Hurricane Red. The cool part about this is because Japan knew that it would get a North American release, they still gave it window packaging. Right? Window packaging is very important because... This is how you discern uh, Tamashi Web stuff, stuff now. Unless it gets a North American release strictly for North America. Now, even though it says Power Ranger Ninja Storm, I don't know if you guys can see that, on the sticker, it still says Go Ranger set here. So Japan really did know way ahead of time that this was going to get an American release. But sometimes things are a little different. For instance, you have Kamen Rider Gaim stuff. This stuff has window packaging, normal releases, right? But these did not come to America. There was no show in America, and they could not license it to get the rights from Japan. So Bluefin did not have the rights to these. These make these difficult to get in the U.S., um, especially because the show is really popular. Now, from that same line, again, round box. We have more Tamashi Web stuff. Now, this is Kamen Rider Shinzengetsu. But as you can clearly see, no window packaging. And no window packaging is how you know, at least nowadays in 2014 and so forth, what a web exclusive is. No window packaging. Specially made for Tamashi Web Shop. Because it's not getting a normal, a normal US release, I would say. So, this stuff right here is how you know that it's an exclusive. The reason why stuff like this is expensive 
especially when a show is popular, you have to go by how much cost, tax, shipping twice, and then discern the value from there and so forth. But Tamashi Webstop stuff is not supposed to be sold in America directly to Americans. That's something Bandai is trying to work out now where maybe it'll be a whole lot cheaper. We will never know. But that's something that Bandai has to work out. But this is part of the reason why web shop stuff is exclusive. Doesn't get released in America, becomes really, really expensive. It sucks. Some people play the wait game and try to hunt stuff down later after it's released. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Because it can get really expensive. One of the prime examples is Kamen Rider Guy. Always a hundred bucks. Always. It sucks, right? Um, then there's certain stuff like Batman. It's a normal release in the U.S. with the license from DC Comics, and it's made by SH Figure Arts. Still, Bandai. It's made under that, that line. Now, both Injustice Joker and Injustice Batman were normal releases. But with the announcement of Harley Quinn, which in Japan was a Tamashi web shop, it came over, it's going to come over to the U.S. as a U.S. release. It's pretty cool. But normally in Japan, as a Tamashi web shop, she would have been expensive if she didn't get a North American release. But, thanks to Bluefin, now it'll be 50 bucks if you pre-order it now. You guys can go ahead and do that if you want. Um, part of the reason why I'm making this video and I want to explain to people is that Tamashi Web Shop stuff in Japan is made to order. So if you order 30,000 pieces, 30,000 pieces will be made. That's it. There's no re-releasing it. There's no coming back out. There's no second chance. And the reason why I'm making this video is because most of the time, this pertains to Dragon Ball Z stuff. Most people who collect Super Sentai and Kamen Rider already know what a Tamashi Web is. But most Dragon Ball Z guys clearly don't understand what's going on. So, the reason why I'm making this video is to break it down. Everything outside of SH Figure Arts Gohan, SH Figure Arts Piccolo normal version, and Super Saiyan Goku are all web shops. Web shops in Japan do not get re-released. If you are looking for Trunks, Super Saiyan Vegeta, Scout to Vegeta, Broly... All those things that right now don't seem like a big deal, in Japan, they're gone. They're not going to be re-released. Unless somehow, some way, they come up with a recolor or decide to repackage it in a different way, they will not get re-released. That's why the price on them skyrocketed so high. And it's safe to say that sucks. It really does. But part of the problem is, people don't pre-order items. You have to pre-order so people can gauge the value. Like I said, problem being, people don't pre-order things. They wait for it to come out, and they don't want to get it later on down the line because they think the price will go down. The problem is with web shops is they don't get re-released. They're made to order. 50,000 copies made, 50,000 copies sold. Wherever they are in the world, now you have to pay the price for one second hand. And that's the problem. Well, for instance, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Big old box of Broly, right? Broly was supposed to be pre-ordered. You get pre-ordered. Let's say you got Broly for 65 bucks, right? On release, Broly is now more expensive. Wanna know why? Because at Bluefin, at Amazon, in Japan, Broly sold out instantly. And I mean that, it sold out instantly. That already jumped the sky pocket, what, 10, 20, 30 bucks? People on eBay are charging like 100 bucks for something that you could have pre ordered for $65. All because you wanted to play the weight game. I mean, honestly, I think people are playing themselves. If you really want something, why not go out and pre order it? I don't understand. But, uh, that's just me. Like I said, the reason I made this video is because this is Goku. Normal release. No brown box. Dragon Ball Z guys, they always go around, yeah, my Goku has a brown box. That's because you put it in a brown box. It does not have a brown box. It never came with a brown box. Normal Goku, black hair, that came in a brown box. You want to know my? It's a Tamashi Web exclusive. But in America, we are very fortunate to have it. They know Dragon Ball Z stuff is going to get released. That's why they give it window packages. Seriously. That's why they give it window packages. Because honestly, dude, in Japan, that stuff is long sold out. Cell, freezer, 200 bucks. Broly, already 100 bucks. SDCC Goku, don't even get me started on SDCC stuff. You know what? Never mind. But prime example, Vegeta and Trucks. Sold for like 40, 50 bucks. Suddenly, they're like $300 right now. All because people wanted to play the weight game and not getting the Dragon Ball Z. And it sucks. But I'm really hoping Bluefin hears me out and tries to recall and try for the first time ever to re-release 
Tamashi Webs. There's always going to be people that end Dragon Ball Z, man. You got to give people a shot. Or that people can start pre-ordering. Gauge their interest. Learn from them. I really hope Bandai and, and Bluefin check it out and listen out to reason. Really hope so. In the meantime, just remember, they're not in scale with Marvel Legends. Thanks, guys. Later.